Today we cross the border from Laos into China. We're in southern Yunnan uh, in a place called Shishuang Bana, also known as Jinghong. I guess you could say that this is kind of like China's version of Thailand or Lao. Let's go. I don't know if we should be going, sir. I think this is a bad move. So we're standing in the middle of traffic here because uh, we don't know how to cross roads. This area is actually heavily populated with a, a group, an ethnic minority, they're called the Dai people. And I mean, like other ethnic minorities, they've been kind of grouped into one. They're actually made up of a bunch of different hill tribes. So I guess you could compare it to the uh, Native Americans, right? We just call them Native Americans. You're not touching this subject. We just call them Native Americans, but they're made up of a bunch of different tribes, right? So, I mean, it's not really any different than that. It does kind of sound bad when I say, you know, the, the Chinese are just calling these people Dai people. Um, even though they're made up of a bunch of different groups who speak different languages. There's like four languages. Um, so, I don't know. I don't want people thinking that they've done something wrong by doing by grouping them all into one group, because it happens all the time. There's 1.15 million Dai people in China, and uh, plenty more in uh, Laos, Thailand, and Myanmar. It looks like there's a big square over there. Let's go check it out. Oh, here we go. There's some uh, ethnic minorities in their traditional garb, in statue form at least. The term Dai actually comes from the word Thai, Thailand, Thai people, because the, the people are actually very closely related to Thai and Lao people. Um, in fact, one of the Dai groups is said to be like kind of the, the original Thai people that came from that group. Look at these parents on these little things. It looks ridiculous. Oh shit, they're out of control! They're having fun. I'm down by the river. You can see it's a bit of a celebration going on. It's actually Chinese New Year, so there's probably more people here than normal. This is the Mekong River. I'm basically standing in the bed of the Mekong. They call it something different in China, though. Sarah, what do they call the Mekong River in China? The Lantang. Obviously, this river is an important part of this culture because the culture basically stretches all the way down the river. This goes through Laos, through Thailand, through Cambodia, through Vietnam. The Mekong River, my favorite river. We spent a lot of time on the river or in cities along the river. Xi Shuang Bana, it translates to, I think it's 12, 12,000 rice paddy fields. So, of course, this area, uh, they grow rice. They grow a lot of things in this area because the weather's always pretty good. So, we're gonna go get some food right now and see what's good, what's good out there. And then we're gonna put that food in our necks. No, <laughs> in our necks. <laughs> Yeah, yo, look at this. We got food for miles. Food for miles. It smells great. Pig's feet. Meat. Meat. Dofu. Clearing up the dofu. Still on the stage. Need to get paid. Juice getting switched, but I'm feeling the same. In 60 days. Stress on your face. Drawing conclusions because I can't be traced. I don't need this when I'm on my own. I don't need this when I'm on my own I don't need this when I'm on my own I don't need this cause I'm fine alone Black fitted, I ain't fucking with it Too lame, y'all ain't coming with us They acting dumb like it's all good Brain fried like my fucking chicken And if I see you in the meat section Dipping out on my reflexes And see, told me I don't need a stress And we just flexing They might need some pills, it could get depressing I don't trade attention, you don't get the message Talking about this music, I could get a bit obsessive Just need to manifest it, oh now I feel like Santa From my presence, I function it like Manu Festive Independent DOI shit, we don't want the help Need to get my pockets fast so I can use my belt Doing well, you just serving, trying to ride the waves And in a way you're getting off yourself 
Ooh, some tomatoes, MSG, sugar, some vinegar probably, green onions, and the noodles. Yeah, those noodle dishes look phenomenal. Got our stomachs are bigger. Alright, this is our dinner. We're picking out six to barbecue. There's a ton of stuff here. And then we're gonna go down in that and find a seat. Yeah. Potatoes, I think I saw some chicken wings. Oh, there's some chicken wings. She said, wait a minute. She's gonna find a seat. No seats. We are table sorted. This beautiful table right here it will be ours shortly. Let's have a look at this crowd. Oh my god. It's a sea of people. And this will be our place to sit. And look at this. It's just like so many people that you don't want to move too much. You feel a little uncomfortable. As Westerners, it's we're not used to being in a space like this. I mean, this is my chair. Okay, okay, butt's gonna touch mine. My chair's on a man cover. Sarah's is on a pile of garbage. And there she is, pulling meat off a stick. All right, how is it? Ooh, some squid. Look at that. They crisp it up nice too. Mm. Mm. You can taste the char, which is what you want because it's fucking barbecue. I've been to barbecue places before that cut that stuff off. This is a Dai specialty. It's uh, obviously cooked in a pineapple, but it's sticky rice. That's how close this backpack is to our eating session. <laughs> Let's hope it's not so <laughs> weird in there. It's really difficult for me to uh, pull the camera and shoot this. There's not enough space, so I'm gonna put the camera down, I'm gonna eat it, and then I'm gonna tell you guys all about it after. Um, but let's get one more shot of Sarah eating meat off the stick. <laughs> all right, we're making our way through this crowd. Uh, these are all the booths selling stuff. That meal was really good. Just nicely barbecued meat. Uh, of course, that's good. What a, I mean, duh. And uh, the pineapple with the sticky rice in it, it's really tasty. It has like bits of pineapple in it, uh, some just interesting flavors, but the rice, the quality of the sticky rice was like nothing else I've ever had. It's just really, really good sticky rice. And I'm not a huge sticky rice guy. So um, I, I imagine it's because they grow it here. It's the land of 10,000, 15,000, 16,000, 12,000 uh, rice paddy fields. So. Um, there's a lot of people staring at me. There, there were a lot of people staring at me before, anyway. Oh, no, my God. <laughs> Escape freedom! That's a huge, huge market. You can still see it's going on all along here. Um, so, uh, I'm glad to get out of there and we're gonna head home. Tomorrow, we're gonna drive a little further north before flying back to Chengdu, the city of gastronomy. And remember to subscribe below, hit the bell icon to get yourself notified. And remember, look both ways before you cross the street. And also remember, whether it's Jinghong 
or Shishuangbana. You can always have your crepe with banana. Oh! <laughs> That's good. You just came in with that. <laughs> yeah. oh, now I'm going to show the crepe banana video on the side. Well, people consider subscribing and then they're going to see that and they're going to be like, the rhyme, it works. It's just like, I got to subscribe to this shit. Damn. I love this girl. <laughs> 